father of my church knows me and my kids are not baptized, but didn't think a full submerged baptism was necessary. Should I insist on full triple immersion, submersion baptism? Well, I would just, you know, direct you to the book we published and uh, buy that book, read it, and you have abundance of producer quotes which show that you need to be triple immersed. That's what it means to be baptized. And it's not me, it's not Orthodox ethos, it's not anybody today. It's the whole witness of the church for 2,000 years. That's what it means to be baptized, triple immersion. And it's in the canons, it's in the apostolic canons, it's it's in the patristic literature, it's in the scriptures themselves. I mean, I don't, I don't know why anybody thinks and how we got to the point. I do have an, a theory about how we got to the point where people think that baptism means anything but triple immersion. Yes, there are always economy exceptions for people in deathbeds. That's not debated, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about what do we do when we baptize? Normal, 99.9% .9 of the time, what do we do when we baptize? We triple immerse. That's what it means to be baptized. Apparently, historically, from my research and from the research of others who wrote the book with me, this idea that you don't have to be triple immersed and that baptism is not triple immersion apparently starts in the West during the scholastic period, and it's evidenced in the teachings of Thomas Aquinas, who says, no, it's just a washing, a washing. That's what baptism means. So you can pour, you can sprinkle, you can immerse. It's all, the symbolism's all there, and it's not necessary to immerse. But that's not the tradition or the teaching of the canons or the fathers. He clearly innovates, and he clearly is doing basically a, uh, and a rational analysis uh, and a reading of what he thinks scripture is telling him and much like a protestant would do today he sits down and says well here uh there's washing and the term means washing in this part of the old testament and there and therefore no no, no there is no therefore you follow the holy fathers what have they taught before you what do the canon say what has the church done Nobody cares about our speculative analysis of scriptural passages. When you see that flee, that's not the orthodox method. I saw that it was an orthodox writer who was doing basically what Aquinas did, and he was trying to prove that actually, just like it was exactly like he was in the scholastic mindset or that methodology, at least by Aquinas. So that's not the orthodox way. No orthodox church father ever said it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you pour, sprinkle, or, or immerse. If people say that today, they're of this age. They're teaching what has been taught in the last 20, 50, 150, 250 years, whatever. I don't know when it started, where it started. It's got a variety of uh, of origins and, and ideas coming from different places, but it's not the consistent perennial teaching of the church as witnessed to by the canons and the fathers for 2000 years. So the answer is yes, Father, why wouldn't you baptize me by triple immersion? It's not hard. We can, I'll pay for the horse trough. Let's fill it up to the brim. Who cares if the water goes over the edge? I want to be immersed because I want to die. I want the, the what Christ taught me to be. I want to be obedient to what Christ taught us. And he taught us to be baptized. That means to be immersed. When the Lord said to Adam and Eve, you got to eat only of this tree and not any other ones. Was he being legalistic? When the Lord said, this is what you got to do. You got to be baptized to go into the kingdom of God. That's what you got to do. You got to believe and be baptized. Was he being legalistic? Was that a legalism that he insists on that, that the fathers insist on that, that the canons insist on that, that they rejected those baptisms of the heretics that never did that, the Eunomians? Is that legalism? No, it's faithfulness. It's humility and obedience to the word of the Lord. That's what we're missing. And that spiritual stance is, a, is, is indicative of, and, and the practice, therefore, is is symbolic of our apostasy. In other words, our laxity. I'm sure there are very sincere people. I know them. I have friends of them, priests and others who will say to me, no, Father, Father doesn't matter. I don't know. God knows. I'm not your judge, but that's not the teaching of the fathers. So show me how it is. I'm happy to, happy to sit down with anybody who's going to show me the diachronic tradition of the church is it doesn't matter if we immerse or we pour or we sprinkle. That's the dike. Show me. It doesn't exist. God help us. Faithfulness. That's what it means. That we're here today. I'm Orthodox. You're possibly Orthodox because of their faithfulness, because of the ascetics, the monastics, the martyrs. Their faithfulness is why I'm Orthodox today. 
And if I if if I don't understand that and participate in that and double down on that in this day of apostasy, then I'm not going to be with them. I'm not going to be their disciples. I'm not going to be a link in the chain for the next generation. If I say, ah, doesn't matter. Ah, just pour it over the head, doesn't matter. All these approaches are mindless, thoughtless, or reckless. They can't be inspired by the same spirit that said to the fathers and canons and councils, triple immersion. We've got saints who responded to the West and said, they're doing only one immersion or they're doing sprinkling. We can't accept their baptism. It's not Father Peter. It's not some modern view, innovation. Somebody said, we've got to do this, is, this is innovation, Father. Father Peter's the innovation in that book. No, it's not. That's nonsense. Show me. Show me. I'm, I'm happy to repent. Uh, tomorrow, I'll make a matanya prostration before anybody who can show me that this is not the diachronic tradition of the church.